Hey everyone, just a quick video to go over the lesson room material. I apologize, I didn't, I didn't get it out earlier. Uh, I've been struggling with the desktop recording software on my computer. Um, so I'm going to click on new project. I just opened up Android Studio. I'm going to click new project. And this semester we're going to be using uh, Jetpack libraries for the beginning of the semester instead of Jetpack Composer. Composer is kind of like a declarative language. Um, libraries let you really dig into the code. And it's what most Android apps are using, like 70 to 80% of Android apps, and a lot of new Android apps as well. It's not like uh, just old Android apps are using Jetpack libraries. So anything you see in the new project dialog that has plural views in it, like empty views activity, is going to use Jetpack libraries. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to use this empty views activity. I'm going to select that and click Next. And we can plug in our new project information. So I'll call this one uh, Lesson 1. And here's our package name, uh, just like Java reverse domain. So edu.tricy.lesson1. We have the save location, which is a path to a directory on a computer. And the language could be Java or Kotlin. If you feel very strongly this semester about using Java, that's fine. I'll use Kotlin. I think it's a good experience for you as well. It's kind of the preferred language for Android apps, and it's a, a really nice, easy to use language. Got a good experience to learn it. Minimum SDK, I'm going to uh, select API 24, Android 7. Um, and this is kind of a nice feature in the new dialog. In the, New project dialog, it shows you an approximation of how many devices that'll run on. So these are like um, currently active Android apps that connect to Google Play. And then go ahead and click finish, and it should create a new project. Um, the first time in, might down, have to download some uh, libraries for you, so it might take a little bit longer. Uh, but eventually, it should open up. Okay, so now that Android Studio is opened up with our project, uh, we can get started looking at the files it's created. I noticed this message in the bottom right corner that Microsoft Defender configuration uh, real with real time. Uh, so I'm gonna say never ask this again. And um, close that. And we can see our main activity. Um, by the way, you want to select automatically so that it automatically um, does not block your folder. Okay, so we have a couple things here. One is our uh, main activity. And notice in the uh, editor window here, it's .kt for Kotlin since I selected Kotlin. And that's under our source code folder. So it expands out the path there. And then we have our resource folder, and this is any like shared uh, resources across our project. So one is our layout files. The other one, another one we're going to look at today is values. Um, and we can have strings. And if we open up our layout, we have this activity main file. And we're going to take uh, some information from an example in lesson one in our reading material and uh, use that to replace what's an activity main. There's one part in our material for this week that uh, isn't created. Uh, it's just a, a slight version difference. And it's this set on apply window insets listener. And I'm just going to com comment that out. There's one part given the XML that we, we have. Uh, it is looking for an ID in that layout file. And, and actually, the um, example that we have deletes that ID setting. So we'll just take it out of there for now. OK, so now our activity main is open. And notice that the editor window kind of disappeared, so you don't see the source code anymore. Um, if you look up in the upper right-hand corner of the window, you'll see three options here, code, split, and design. So if we click on code, you'll see what's what is XML code. This is the actual code behind the layout. Um, and then 
if we click on design, you'll see this kind of designer window with a palette with different components that we can drag on to our view. Here's a visual representation of our view and attributes. So if you click on a um, component, then there are attributes that you can set um, for that component. So here's our source code, and uh, the, the uh, reading material for this week gives us an example of um, the XML file behind our file. Um, also, in I want to point out one other thing in this um, Explorer window. You can select project. Uh, it kind of gives you the file representation. There's also a, a specific specific Android view, which is kind of nice because it separates out the source code and tests and the resources. It's a little easier to navigate, in my opinion. So here's the layout file. Um, okay, so let me get to the XML code. Actually, I think I have it open. Okay. Okay, so here is our layout from our reading material. And I want to point out one thing here is that here's the um, given code, which is just um, showing a, a message that is constrained to the center of the dialog um, and just says, hello world. And so if we look in strings, we'll see uh, string, I'm sorry, it's not coming from the string. Let's just be hard coded into the XML. So I'm gonna click on code and yep, you can see here. So text is hello world. Um, so we're gonna replace all this. This is the ID that I mentioned that's not in our book example. So I added that. I'm gonna take the code from the book and paste it in here. And notice I'm actually replacing everything except for that first line, which just declares that the file is XML code. So it's actually changing the layout from this constraint layout to a linear layout. So completely different type of layout. And we have a text view. This is uh, going, to going to present the uh, text for the question and then a linear layout, which is set to horizontal so that the two buttons show up next to each other. If we change that to vertical, the buttons will be stacked on top of each other. We'll, we'll go over the different layouts later in the semester. And this is the line that I added back into the code that we were given. So it just sets an ID. And it's actually irrelevant. Um, I just put it in there just in case you forgot to comment out this code, which does reference that ID here, this r.id.main. Um, so I added that back. So if we looked at it, if we tried to save it, um, we would see down at the bottom here problems. There are three problems. Can't resolve symbol at string question text, true button, and false button. And you'll notice um, I can click on problems to see what the problems, what problems are occurring in the code. Um, but I can also look in the code and see it's highlighted in red. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to go add some string resources. So I'm gonna go to string. And we have one string resource of the app name. I'm going to add three more. One is question text. The other one is true button with an underscore separating the two words and false button. And in XML, we don't use uh, uppercase letters. So instead of camel case, we use this kind of, we separate the words with an underscore. Um, And I'll just make the question and the true button is just going to say true and the false button will say false and I'll save that make sure that we saved our layout and notice the red goes away now that we added those string activities and there's no our messages in our main activity as well. And so now we want to run the app. And so how do we run the app? Well, 
this app needs to run on an Android app, on an Android um, device. So the way that we do it is um, to come up here and if you scroll through this run uh, message, you'll find this uh, icon that looks like a device, a phone, kind of a phone. And if I click on that, I can see a couple of devices and I've had problems with these in the past. These are a little, a little hard to manage. Um, and if you don't see anything, click on this add device, create virtual device, and it'll open up this dialog, this virtual device manager. Um, we just call it the AVD, the Android Device Manager. And it has a big list of devices. And if you click on one of these that isn't on your computer, what it'll do is it'll walk you through, uh, if we just want a generic small phone, for example, you click next and it'll show all of the defaults and you can, you can even change some of the settings and click next give it a name give it a startup orientation so you know you want to pretend that the phone starts in a landscape versus portrait you can change that and then click finish and it'll actually go through a download process and it will download the device to your computer and start it up so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to click on one that we have and try to start it and this takes a minute so I'll come back once it starts up. Okay, and now that we have a device started up, we can come up to the app run menu up here and click run app. And it's gonna take our app and build it and install it on the device. And if we come to the bottom here, we can click on build and see progress on the build. It takes a little while to build and deploy it to the device sometimes. Uh, so there's definitely some patience involved. Once it's once it's deployed and running, we make updates. It's a lot faster to uh, jump between the updates, but that first time building and deploying takes a little while. So I'm gonna pause it here and come right back after it's deployed to the emulator. Okay, so now our app is running on our emulator and you can see there's two buttons we can press the buttons it doesn't actually do anything at the moment and you can see our message So Kotlin is a language used in Android, and then we have a button, the true underscore button and false underscore button, as we defined in the active email. Here's the button, and it has ID. We define it that way so that it's uh, available inside the Kotlin file. True button and false button. Okay, so now we need to uh, wire up our view and the way we're going to do that is go into our main activity into our on create and right at the top of that on create we're going to add a couple of buttons to define i'm sorry a couple of lines to define the button And again, we'll go over, over all of this code in more detail later on. So basically we have a button object called true button and a button object called false button. And at the moment, those are just button objects inside of this uh, on create method, but they are not actually defined as, uh, as the true and false button. We're not, they're not connected basically to this layout. Uh, before we move on though, do you notice that button is highlighted in red? And I'm gonna save the file. And then if I uh, click on it, it shows me um, android.widget.button. And it says click Alt plus Enter. And basically what it did is it added the import statement that's needed. So if I go up, up to my import statements, 
it added that android.widget button. So if I highlighted it, it prompted me and it said press Alt Enter and it added that um, import statement for us. So it is kind of, uh, it, it recognizes the button object and adds appropriate import statements for us. So it's pretty nice from that standpoint, just like IntelliJ for Java, it's, it's based on that idea. Okay, so we have these objects, true button and false button. Now we need to come down here and say, true button equals, and we're gonna use this call, find view by ID. And this is where we're gonna plug in that true and false uh, underscore button ID. So it this is actually going to look inside of our resource file. Uh, which we define uh, here. So we said set content view equals activity main. It loaded that activity main XML file. And now we're looking in it using this r.id. So call it by, I find it by ID, true button. And we're gonna do the same for the false button. And so now we have these references to the actual uh, GUI button here. And now we can create a uh, listener. So just like uh, if you took the JavaScript class and you, and you, you know, knew we, we know that HTML elements, we can set um, event listeners. We can do that also with a, an Android button object. So we have this true button. And if I type uh, dot the access operator, I can access this set on click listener. My uh, autocomplete is really slow right now for some reason. And we're going to set it uh, on the view. Um, so I'm just going to type it in. Let's see. It'll just be view. Anytime you click on that button in the view, it's going to run this. So we'll just do something. And again, check it out. There's no view, um, nothing for the view imported. So I'm going to, I'm going to save the file. I'm going to click on view um, to highlight it. And it should give me the option to add that. Not doing it. Oh, I think I see something. The uh, buttons are actually declared inside the onCreate. They should be declared before the onCreate. I'm going to move those up there. And Okay, so I've moved the uh, buttons outside of the onCreate and uh, I see this view. Here's another way to, to um, fix the problem is you can press Alt Enter as well, but there's also this drop down uh, before the line showing some quick fixes for the um, problem. So here's import class view. We can also just go up and add it ourselves. So I, I know that it's uh, import android.view.view. So there we go. And then we'll save it. So now we have this on this set on click listener for the true button. We can add it for the false button as well. And save that. And uh, from our example this week, what we're going to do is just have a pop-up message in, in Android. Uh, a pop-up message with some text information, kind of almost like an alert, uh, is typically done with toasts. And so we're going to pop up some toasts. And uh, first we're gonna go ahead and add some string resources. So back to our XML for strings. 
and our first one is going to be a correct message and you will just say correct and another one for incorrect which we'll just say incorrect and go ahead and save that and then back in our main activity we can add text the um, call for toasts and we're gonna have to again add a a um, an import statement but toast dot and this is where the the book was slightly off on this um, there is no make toast any longer it's uh, make text so we're gonna say make oh. we're gonna say make text and this and string dot uh, this is the true button so we want the correct toast that's the string message and there's a length setting so just a you know, the size of the toast and um, it automatically added the import statement for it so there it is import android widget toast and now we can just take this make text and copy and paste it down into our set on click listener for false toast and we'll just change the string to incorrect so i'm going to save this i'm going to come to the run menu and there's this you can see kind of a, a stop and rerun kind of a uh, icon there that just says run app Rerunning is usually a lot faster than running for the first time. So I will let that run. And let's see how long it takes. I think it's pretty quick this time. I'll pause it for just a sec, but I, this one should happen pretty quickly. Okay, and I missed one thing on the at the end of the make text, we do need to call that show. Um, and it looks like there's a better option I'm not I wasn't familiar with uh, until now this applied changes and restart activity so I'm going to click on that and hopefully this is faster because that make changes and reload or rerun app is uh, pretty slow Okay, so there you have it. We Since we're adding that dot show and clicking on the button, you can see the toast appears at the bottom. So if you click true, it's correct. If you click false, it says incorrect. So that's it. Um, as you get started with Android Studio, have some patience. I know it takes a lot of download stuff for the emulator and running it the first time can be kind of slow. Um, yeah, save the file and use this button. Apply changes and restart activity seems a little bit quicker. Um, and pay attention to the um, problems window and the build window to see what's happening um, as you're running it and debugging it. And also let me know if you have any questions. Good luck getting started.